when I first bought my new drawing tablet, a couple of people asked me about a tablet writing or a tablet note taking app. And I didn't really know what application to suggest because I really hadn't gone and looked into it. I didn't buy the tablet for the sake of taking notes. I bought it to play Osu and also edit my thumbnails. But I did think it'd be fun to look into, and from my research, it seems like one application sort of stands out amongst the crowd. That application being Zernal++, and no matter how good the application might be, it will not help my handwriting. One important thing to note is while this does have a mode where it can recognize shapes, this isn't a handwriting recognition app, so no matter what you write, it's going to be what you write. It's not going to go and try to convert that into a font that makes it considerably more legible. Now, on the surface, this might look like a very basic application, and that's not really helped by the fact that it's got these very bubbly icons, which make it look like an application made for children. But from my testing, it seems like it's actually a really powerful application and provides a lot of really interesting customization. Now, the first thing you probably want to do is go and customize the page so you actually have the, you know, layout that you want to work with. Now, by default, it's going to be using this lined document which might be fine for some of the things you're trying to do, but personally, I would much rather just get rid of those and have a completely blank document. Luckily, the background and what we actually write on the document are completely separate entities. So if we want to go and customize that, all of the options for customizing the page are under journal, and then we have page format, page color, and then background. Background is going to go and control what's actually being seen on the background here. So let's go and make this plain. And we can also go and apply this to all of the pages. That means that any of the other pages we may have had created will also have that background. But if you just want to go and set it for that individual page, you don't have to do that. Now, as for the other options, the page color should be pretty straightforward. We can go and set a custom color. Let's make the page red, for example. Now the page is red. I really don't like that. Let's go and set it back to not red. And then the other option we have is the page format, like you would see in a word processor. We can go and set a template. So let's go and make this, I don't know, A5, for example. Or we can go and set a custom size and even make it landscape. So there we go. Because I've made the page smaller now, uh, part of what I wrote earlier is now gone. But luckily, we can go and undo with Control z and redo with Control y now, the pen thickness isn't as customizable as I would like it to be, but this isn't a drawing application, so it's not really that big of a deal. So, in the default UI, there is three options. There is fine, which looks something like this. There is medium, which looks like this. There is thick, which looks like this. And then there is also very thick if we go to the tool options and scroll down to the pen settings right here. And that one looks like so. As you may be able to tell there, there is actually pen pressure support. I wouldn't be talking about this if pen pressure was not supported. That's basically a fundamental thing for any pen-based application. But if you don't have a pen, you can still use the application. Mouse is supported perfectly fine. Obviously, there'll be no pressure and it is going to look a little bit more jittery, but it works as it should. Now, this page is getting a little bit crowded, so let's go and add in a new one. So, you might think that if you go and press this button right here, that would add in a new page, because it is right next to the delete button. That sort of just makes sense. What that one actually does is duplicates the current page, which maybe is what you want, but in my case, isn't what I want to see. What I want to do instead is go and right-click on one of the existing pages, then click on Insert Page Before or Insert Page After. I'm going to go and Insert Page After, and now we have a new blank page. You probably can't see this because my face is in the way, but in the bottom right-hand corner, we can go and zoom in as well, but you don't have to use your mouse to do that. If we go and press Control, Shift, and then the plus equal key, that will zoom in, and then Control minus is going to zoom out. Like a lot of applications, it has the zoom in on plus rather than on equals, so you will need to go and press an extra key to go and press that. Under most situations, you don't need to go and manually focus on a page. If you need to do that, that can be done by clicking on it inside of the preview window on the left, or by selecting it by using your arrow keys. Because these are next to each other, I can use the left and the right key. If you're just trying to draw, all you need to do is make sure the document is on your screen, and then just start drawing on it, and you'll instantly focus on it. 
with some of the tools up the top here, they're going to have options you can set before you actually go to use them. For example, if we want to go and add a new page, clicking on this drop down here is going to let us select what type of page we want to use. So I could go and select the graph page and clicking on new means we're going to go and have a graph. But on other ones, let's say with the pen icon right here, you might want to go and use a dotted pen rather than what we had before where it was a solid line. But other things like the eraser are going to have things like the standard mode where basically it's going to erase stuff as you'd expect. But if we go and change the background color here, this is a better way to demonstrate this. There's also a whiteout mode where it works like having whiteout where effectively you're just using a, a white pen and it's going to be crossing stuff out like that. Or you could go and use delete stroke where it's going to delete the entire stroke you took to actually draw that line. All of those different modes are going to have their own separate use cases which depend on what you're trying to do and in many ways what you prefer working with as well. Now any decent drawing or drawing related app is going to have a shape tool. Now do keep in mind that you have to be either selected on the pen or the highlighter to actually use the shape tool. If you are selected on the eraser that isn't going to work. It's similar to something like Critter where the eraser is a mode of the pen rather than its own separate tool but in this case it sort of is a separate tool. Tool. It's a weird way to structure it, but that's that's how it works. Now the shape tool works, you know, as a shape tool would work. And because this is relying on the pen, if we have it set it on dotted, it is going to give us this dotted line if we use dash, dash, so on and so forth. There's not many shapes to work with, but everything you'd expect to be here is going to be here. So we have the rectangle, the draw ellipse, draw arrow, we have a line. Now coordinate system is here. Basically because this is a note taking app and you know you might be in math class you want to draw a coordinate system That's why that one is there. There is a draw spline which will let you draw, you know Anything you really want. It's just a matter of how you work with the tool and then there is also the stroke recognizer now I mentioned this one earlier basically if we try to draw a shape it's going to go and basically turn what you draw into that shape. I've noticed that for some things like squares, it is a little bit fiddly. Uh, you have to be very, apparently it's working today. When I was testing this earlier, you had to be like very, very clear with the lines you were putting in. And I'm not sure sort of how many shapes it works with. It seems like triangles are not being recognized. By the looks of it, only recognizes the shapes that are in this list. And that's basically it. But that's perfectly fine. If you need to draw a shape, you do have the shape tools there anyway. The stroke recognizer is just a nice extra thing to have. And we can also select elements and move them around as well. That is going to be done by this tool right here. So we can either go and use a rectangle to select it, or we can go and just click on it directly and then grab it like that. Now, the way it's going to be working is based on the specific stroke. So anything you click on is going to be that individual stroke. And if you want to grab more than that, make sure you go and actually grab it with the, uh, the rectangle tool. Or in cases where the rectangle doesn't make sense, you can use select region and then draw a region around the thing you want to select. Keep in mind the region does have to fully encompass it. If you slightly cut a corner, it will not actually work. And sometimes when you're taking notes, you might want to do a bit more than just draw out the notes. In which case, what you might want to do is add in an image. That can be done by clicking on the image tool and then clicking on the page you want to add it to. Let's go and add in this one right here. And then we can go and move this around like any of the things we saw before. I didn't mention this earlier, but there is also a snapping feature. That can be disabled by clicking on the magnet for the grid snapping when you're moving. And then the... I guess, circle with an arrow when you're doing a rotation. And because this is a tool, make sure you go and actually deselect the tool. Otherwise, it is going to go and try to add in another image. That is kind of an annoying way for it to work, but that's the way it has been designed. Now, another thing we can go and do is add in text. This works, you know, as adding in text should. We can go and modify the text by selecting this right here and going and saying, let's make it bigger as well. There we go. The text looks different. It works as a text selector should. But another thing that's really cool is this option right here for embedding in LaTeX. Why can you embed LaTeX? Well, let's say you're doing your math homework or you're taking some math notes and you don't want to have to go and manually write out the formulas. 
That's a perfectly valid use case. And on the topic of taking notes, there is supposed to be a feature to go and record audio and then embed it directly into the page. But clicking on the recording icon, I can't get the recording to actually start. Previously complained about not having an audio directory actually set, but now I've set that and it's still not actually working. I don't know why that's not working. It's shown to be working on the actual website, so I'm not sure what's going on here. And the last really cool feature this has is the PDF annotations. So let's go to file, click on annotate PDF. I don't think we need to save this, so I'm going to discard it. And then select this one right here. Give that a second to actually load. I feel like this is a fairly large PDF, so uh, it might take a little bit. I'll cut back to when it's done. Note to self, Zernal is not a fan of long documents and sometimes might just crash. It seems perfectly fine on this one, even though this one is way longer, but I have no idea. But the PDF annotation, when it works, is basically, you know, as you'd expect. It lets you annotate PDFs. Basically, you can do all of the same drawing stuff, but this time on a PDF document. So if you want to go and take notes, this is one way to do so. I didn't mention this earlier, but there is a plugin system, and the application actually does ship with some plugins. I don't know what any of the plugins that it ships with actually do, besides the ones that actually, you know, have a description. Um, but if you want to go and write your own plugins, these plugins are written in Lua, and I will leave the documentation linked in the description down below. I haven't really checked it over too much, but from the brief look I have done, it seems like most of what you need is going to be there. I've mentioned the UI many times throughout this video, but you don't have to have the UI actually looking like this. If we go to the view and then toolbars, there's actually a couple of different modes that you can use. Right now we are in portrait mode, but if we go to Zernal++ mode, that is going to have a bunch of stuff moved down the bottom here, and there's a bunch of other default options you can go with as well. But something you might want to look into doing is going down to the customize section, and then if we go click on yes here, that's going to create a copy to actually edit. Now we can actually move everything in the UI exactly where we want it to be. If you really like what the application has to offer, but you don't really like the way that it's currently laid out, this might be worth looking into because clearly there is a lot to actually mess around with here. Then the rest of the settings are going to be under edit and then preferences. This will include things like how you want your mouse to actually work, how you want your stylus to work, how you want the pen pen pressure to work. The pen pressure is by no means as configurable as something like Critter, for example, but it really doesn't need to be. It just needs to actually work. And if you're one of those people who uses a touchscreen, touchscreen is also supported in here as well. And all of that can be configured basically as you want it to be. Now, the reason why that's there, not because many people use a touchscreen on Linux, it's because this is also supported over on Windows and Mac OS as well. But I'm sure there's someone out there who does use a touchscreen on Linux, and they're probably going to be in my comment section. If I was the sort of person who liked taking notes and I was still in uni, I probably would use an application like this if I actually had my tablet at the time. It's just that when I was at uni, I didn't really take notes. I was one of those people who sort of crammed the night before the exam and still somehow managed to do relatively well. I don't know how. Uh, it was probably bad for my mental health, but that's the way I like to work. But I can totally get the note taking thing and why, you know, it's probably better. So let me know your thoughts on Zernal++ in the comment section down below. Is this the sort of application you're looking for? Do you want something a bit more stripped down, a bit more minimal that basically is just taking notes, you don't care about all of this customization, you just want to be able to write with pen pressure and that's basically it. I'm pretty sure there are some apps out there that basically do that and I might have to go and have a look at some others. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribe so only bearer paid linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays where I live stream twice a week upload about five or so YouTube shorts and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and I'm out. I forgot what my, uh, my button was.